Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Anyhow, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I don't even have my here. Pass me my fish finder hat. Every time I kneel down here, I'm showing my shiny spot on the back of my head, and that's because that's where my cap rests. So tonight, uh, over the past week, we've been working on a dragonfly gumphis, stacked with olive green deer hair. And uh, man, what can I say? It's uh, I had a I had a guy come in today that followed us around the lake, and he's like, "Hey, man." Where's that pattern you were using on, can we drop a name? Sure. Ivy Lake, okay? For, this is one of the lakes we've been fishing. It's Permanent Trophy Lake. It's got some big, big bows in it. And I find that background noise is kind of throwing me off a little bit here. I, I'm You're trying, I just wanna. Groove with it, eh? No, I'm in a different groove. It's been four years without the tunes. But uh, anyhow, the guy came in, followed me, and he's like, hey, where's that dragonfly nymph that you were using on Ivy Lake? I'm like, what, this one? I had to go to my truck, cut it off, bring it in. He looked at it, gave it a sniff, and he's like, that thing smells like fish. I'm like, yeah, man, it's probably caught, like, I'd say a good 15 fish in an hour and a half or two hours of fish or whatever it was. So tonight we're going to share the recipe with you, and we'll get started. Let's, we'll go down to the bottom camera. Anyhow, pretty simple to use, too. Hey, Scotty. It's uh, you can cast and blast this sucker, oh, but what? Fish got another eight or eight to ten fish on it today. Yeah, I guess so. you took it out with the clients today, didn't you? Back on Ivy. So that, that one bomb proof. So what do we got? We're starting out here with some uni thread and olive. Get a little bit of base on there. Man, we uh, we had one hell of a show for you guys today. Uh, wait five minutes to let me get my hook found. And Scotty cuts his thread, and the beats were groovy. And then uh, we started the show about an hour and 20 minutes late today because uh, technical difficulties. We were missing drivers and yada, yada, yada. So anyhow, you want to get a little chunk of, what do we got here, pheasant tail. Pheasant tail, barred, I think, what is this? Is that golden pheasant tail? Yeah. Take a nice little chunk of boat, uh I don't know, quarter of an inch stacker in there. Try and line your tips up somewhat. They don't have to be perfect, just kind of whatever. And you want to you want to stick it off the back of the shank about the hook gap. So about about there somewhere. At that point, we'll move this thread back. I know Scotty. He actually came back in here because he wanted to see how this sucker was tied. Because he's gonna go home and tie him himself. I assure you. Cut off the excess. Throw it away. That's what I should have been doing, getting everything off the table. Throw it away. Yeah, at the store here, Spud Valley Sporting Goods in beautiful sunny Pemberton today, we um, we bought a new handy dandy, what the hell kind of vacuum is that thing? The Dyson, the Dyson. little cordless Dyson. And I'll tell you, when you're doing gumfuses, be prepared to make a fairly substantial mess. mess. So now we're going to start with the uh, the deer hair that I've been using. So this one is olive deer hair. This is the only real color that we've tried yet. I mean, I've, there's lots of different variations. There's yellows, there's browns, there's blacks. Dark olive. Dark olive. And uh, I haven't I haven't steered too far away from this no, one. That one matches the bottom of our lake that we're fishing. It does. It matches Yeah, the it does. So anyhow, you want to start off. Looks like. Somebody else has been working this patch over. Um, I found that a shorter scissor works too. Like So when you go to the Superfly, they've got different depths of blades. I found the shorter one works better for doing the deer stocking because it doesn't grab as much. You don't really need to get too crazy with how much you put on there at a time because you're... But I mean, the, the thicker the patch that you stick on there, the more dense your fly is going to get. So anyhow, you can see how big that is. Um, how how big would you say that Show is? Show us the butt end of it. The butt end of it. Towards the camera. It doesn't really do much justice because if you were trying to... There you go. ...show it, I guess That's, it would be about the hook Gives you a gap. better idea that way. Yeah. yeah. 
because my fingers are short and they're fat. So you want to center it somewhat on where you're going. Put one fairly loose wrap and at that point you're going to stack and let it spin. And the back one is always the trickiest gets... because the tail end of it gets caught in behind the hook itself. But that's super easy. You just grab it and you can pull it through or you can even leave it the way it is. I usually pull it through and then at that point you just spin her up, spin her up. And then you kind of work your way through it, pull it back until you're up in front of it. Put a couple wraps in front, pull it back fairly good. And you can kind of see what we're going to do here. So at that point, you don't want to start your stack right on it, but you want to give it about, uh, in Canada, that would be about two millimeters. <laughs> so in inches, a, a uh, it would probably be a lot, a lot less than that, maybe a 30 second. Uh, we take another stack of deer hair couple of thread wraps a couple of thread wraps okay same thing you can see the stack I'll try and square it up there so you guys can see so you take another stack about the thickness of your the gap take that guy lay it back try and center it where you're going to take your thread pull it up give it a loose wrap give it a couple and then let her spin and there you go that's wrapping deer hair. So at that point, you kind of work it up through the deer hair, pull it all back, and you want to do this. Repeat. Repeat. So needless to say, this pattern is going to take you a little bit of time. But this guy right here, this fish, this fly right here, has caught about 20 fish already. Fish certified. It's fish certified. And they, uh, I don't know what it is, man. They just can't get their teeth through all that deer hair to destroy the thread wrap. So you got your stack again. Yeah, you know what? And it kind of held the smell of success in it, too. And I, I think that might have, I wonder if that's classified as, classified as bait at that point. But... <laughs> Hey, whatever, whatever it takes, man, we were getting it done. So there you go. You're wrapping it up, get it nice and tight, Excellent. work your way up through the head. Let it be, guys. Yeah, see you, Scotty. See, they're live, Sean, when you were live. Friday night. So work it back, stack that sucker back. So there you go, we're stacking it back. One more, okay, and you want to leave a little bit of room Good luck, Scotty. for your head. Because without it, you ain't got nothing. And I'll tell you one thing. When you're stacking hair, it's difficult to keep it entertaining at the same time. Except for those people that have done it before and they're like, yeah, that deer hair spinning, that ain't no fun. But I'll tell you, when you get the scissors into this, you can cut pretty well any shape that you want to cut. And that's when it becomes fun. Ain't that right, Scotty? Oh, that is so crap. That is when it becomes fun. So, I'm going to work this guy back. Right, we got somebody from Argentina chiming in tonight. Nice. Leandro. Okay, Hello so. from Canada. At this point, you're going to take your whip finisher. You're going to tie it off at the head. Tie it off at the head. Poppy poop, pop, pop. Take your sharp scissors, cut this sucker off. Now we're gonna go to town with our very sharp scissors and you're gonna get your shape. And that's what you're looking for, okay? Right now it doesn't look like a anything. Hotness. It looks like a mouse. If you look at it, you could cut this into a mouse if you wanted to, but we're gonna give it a haircut. And we're just gonna rough it in at first. Shape. Get the, What's the sh the shape you're going for? With the shape, I'm trying to square you it want, off right now. Yeah, I'm just kind of squaring it off. And uh, with a dragonfly nymph, if you guys look online, you will find and dandy Google a dragonfly nymph or gumphus, another word for a dragonfly nymph, is uh, they're flatter than they are wide. There you go. I think uh, did I say that right? Yeah. We're so you want to keep. The body wider than it is deep 
if that makes sense, I hope. So we just kind of keep the shape, try and get the shape. And then the bottom, same thing, because it's narrower than it is so wide. Top and bottom are cut shorter and the sides a little bit longer. And you see how that mess of hair is starting to come together here to form something very special. Okay, and at this point you go in, you don't want to cut all that fantastic pheasant tail off in the butt. You just kind of get in there, cut her back, get up above it. And I can tie about five or six of these things and then I start going cross-eyed. And you probably will too. Because it does take a bit of uh, concentration. It's not just like throwing stuff on a hook although it did look like we we're just throwing stuff on a hook <laughs> <laughs> and then you scoped it so you can see that tail starting to poke through and I'll tell you one thing if your scissors aren't sharp forget yeah. about it yeah it's a painful process forget about it you end up pulling your deer hair out and then it all falls apart yeah I get all those long ones okay so now you want to get the shape better so what we're going to do is get her a little flatter uh, same on the bottom can you see the shape starting yeah And then I'm just gonna round it a little bit and they're a little bit heavier to the rear than they are the front so you can shape it a little bit to the front and you know what having it the profile that it is it'll actually help it ride straight too you don't really see too many too many patterns, do you? People tying gumfuses online. I think no. it's just because they're time consuming. They are very time consuming. And you kind of got to be good with your scissors, man, in a sense. Okay, so we got the good shape here. This is coming together nicely. Okay, so time consuming, it is. So you guys are probably all chilling there, drinking a cold one, dreaming about fishing. And this fly, I assure you, is worth the wait. So at this point, I've got a little too much crowd in the head, so I'm just going to cut it back a little bit. Because you still have to have room to tie your head, your beads, and your wings in there. Or your legs. On a dragonfly nymph, it's not wings, it's legs. Which I think, I think in the description I call them wings, but they're actual legs. So at this point, you want to put your uni thread back on there and olive. We're going to wrap it back a little bit, wrap it back into that deer hair trap a little bit of it. Okay, thread, cut. Now we're going back to the pheasant tail. Get this thing buggy. And the same thing, you want to probably go with about a half inch, I'm going to say half inch to quarter inch to a half inch somewhat line your tips up right so they look something somewhat buggy because uh, most of the uh, dragonflies that I've seen uh, most of their legs are pretty even and when you're lining it up what I've found is just get it just to the edge of the body at that point trap it with your finger on the edge loose wrap loose wrap then get it tight Take this loose stuff on the end, cut it off, and throw it away. There, you can see how that's starting to look like legs. It's mighty sexy. Okay, so now you want to duplicate that. So what did we say? We said roughly a half inch, quarter inch, let's say three eighths of an inch. Cut the difference between half and a quarter. Same thing, square up your tips line them up on the back you want to just pass the body and they match the other side push it there with your thumb 
give it a loose wrap, second loose wrap, adjust before you tighten it up. At that point, you can start getting a little tighter. But you also want to, before you start locking it down, just give it a quick roll and see how it's looking, right? At that point, you can see those legs are really looking buggy on both sides, and they're pretty close to the same in length. And then you can tie it back. Okay, at that point, cut this stuff off. Get ready to make your head. Okay. Okay. Yeah, if, you're, if your legs aren't even, it's dead. It'll make it spiral. Yeah. So that's, the, that's the biggest thing. You want to make sure your legs are good. Okay, so clean that head up before we get too crazy ahead of ourselves. Pearl chain, black. Okay, so go to your... Here, let's go up top quick and we'll just show them what it looks like. Are we there? Camera three? Camera three. All right, camera three. See, if you're on a budget and you want to make a real nice necklace for your girlfriend, you go on down to Michael's and you get a black set of these bead pearl chains, real pretty like, and it looks good on them. But if you got lots of money, you can use them as bug eyes. So in this case, this is what we're doing. We can go back down. So we're back down to the bottom camera. We got these beautiful bug eyes. So it's at Michael's, you get them, it's called Pearl chain, black. And they've got them in a bunch of different colors, which I've got in another box. They make them in yellow, they make them in pretty well every color of the rainbow. Pearl, red, I've been gold. And the pearl, you know what I should do is I should pull that over quick. They're in the top of this one. <clears throat> Our UV. But the black one I found has been working the best. But you can see. And if you want to really impress your girlfriend, I wouldn't I wouldn't pull this one with the wife do both yeah or actually the white you know what the wife you already got her so you can get away with getting cheap you might you might have to be on the dish patrol Just don't let her rub her on her teeth that's right don't let her rub her on her teeth so that's the white one and you know what when you hit this stuff with the UV light stand back oh can you see that oh it's Mardi Gras that's right yeah big low you can big take hat. her to the, you can take her to the club and them UV lights they got, the black lights, they're gonna look really good on her. She's gonna stand out in the crowd, boys. Keep your eye on her. That's right, keep an eye on her. <laughs> All right, to put these black eyes on, it's just a simple figure eight. Don't crowd the head. Crowd the head, it's silver. Boy. Yeah, they build up a little bit of thread. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yep, I'm gonna have to thread back a bit. Filling that gap a little. Yep. 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 I did crowd the head a little bit here with this because I was I was on such a nice roll stacking it and that funky beat I tell you man, you got me thinking of daydreaming about uh, fly fishing, and I was there fly fishing. Okay, so get that head in there. Anyhow, you guys are getting the point. Yeah. You guys and gals. Man, it's looking good. My oh, yeah, eyes looking so good. So at this point clean this up just a little bit as you know what over time the deer hair settles and you're gonna find that you're gonna have to clean things up a little bit okay so we got those eyes in there real pretty like I have my tongue out there did you see that? No. <laughs> I was concentrating man I don't real think anybody did they were all <laughs> <looking> <laughs> at the fly <laughs> okay so we got them on top you guys can have a quick look there that looks pretty buggy don't it you could yeah. probably fish it the way it is it's right now, good. but to me that ain't finished. <laughs> so we are going to go with the black, the black bronze, which is this one right here, dubbing. And at this point, lengthen her up a little bit. How long is this show? This has got to be a record for me. And it's, it doesn't really count because uh, we started the show off with five minutes of us looking for hooks. So a dub in behind those head, the eyeball there, pull her in tight. You can see how this fly is starting to take shape. Okay. <clears throat> 
How's it looking there, cameraman? Beauty. Yeah, this fly does take a little bit of concentration. I'll give it that. Okay, one little bit more filler. Uh, yeah, if you're doing them, you want to kind of do them in stages. You want to go through and do all your bodies. If you're going to go and tie six, spin all your deer hair, trim it all, and then come in and finish after. Make your life a little easier. You kind of get in a groove. Yeah. And that's the truth of it. You really do get in a bit of a groove. Okay. We're almost there, guys. We're just going to give it a light wrap on the head in behind the eyes. And I'll tell you, man, that uh, diamond dub is so easy to use. You know what? I think I got too much on there for to go between because I don't really have much room on the head there, but we'll try it. Yeah, just one loop, one wrap. Oof. Come on, get in there. Okay, we're going in between. Bingo. Got it. Okay, we're going to whip finish in there. That was pretty sneaky. Did you see how I did that? I did. Okay, so we got that head in. And being that I crowded the head a little bit, you might want to be able to push a little bit of that stuff back. Okay, so... You got that bug head in there. I'm just going to have a quick look at squareness. Looking good. Looking good. Clean up the body a little bit here. So one thing I found that prolongs the life of these flies is putting some of this new product that we've got. One of our sponsors, Solares. This Solares. Can you see that okay? Yeah. Solares, awesome product. I uh, I like it myself. I use it since we've got it. I've never even heard of this stuff prior to this. But man, I'll tell you, that last fly I put on the head, it's 20 fish deep. And you wouldn't even know it's caught a fish other than the smell. Yeah. The well, smell of success. Have you checked out their website? Are I have. Since they yeah. got some good fishing products. Yeah, they do. Really good stuff. Waiter cures and... And the nicest thing about this stuff... A bunch of glow-in-the-dark cures. So anyhow, I'm just going to put a little bit of this stuff up on the head. Just to arm it. Make it look real pretty-like. And it holds the head in place as well. Wow, that's amazing. You know what? The thin is so nice and thin, it just sucks it right up. And then, what we'll do, just make sure you got the shape that you're looking for. Everything's square. Big, the biggest thing. Big, big glob of it hanging off. Yeah, just on the head. Bingo. Okay, so, that point, I'm just going to hit the bobbin on it quick, just to get the shape that we're looking for. Pull some of that diamond dub back out of the eye put it back into the body perfect right there cure it into place and that's what you do oh. let me just show you guys i've got two uv lights speeds up the process for what we uh we You're lost sur in surround sound sun <laughs> that's right that poor uh dragonfly nymph for the gumpus is getting a suntan right now so anyhow the amount of time that I put on that, that thing is hard as a rock right now. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have the BK Gumphis. Mmm, delightful. Try it in your local waters. If you got dragonflies, you got these big old juicy nymphs in there. And those big old trout. And you know what, in the, the description, funny thing is, is, hey, Scott, have you caught a small fish with this pattern yet? No. It only catches big fish. And I can honestly say that with a smile on my face. This fly only catches big fish. <laughs> so, if you want to catch a big fish, put this guy on. Drag her slow. 
Anyhow, we might as well go up top. That's probably the longest fly I've ever tied. And uh, hold on, I just want to show some people some different variations of that. And actually, we'll go back down for a couple seconds. So, there, we tied. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. So, we tied that one. Look forward. I'll take, get her in there. I'll take her down for. Yeah, so I can get my thumb now. I'll get my thumb now. So, we got a few different variations. If you guys go on there and you look, uh, an easier variation of this one is called the BK Dragonfly Nymph, which is tied with like a, a, a yarn of some sort. Um, I've got funky with it. I put the, the white with the, the UV uh, B chain there. Uh, this one's got a mallard flank leg. This one's got. got a couple today on it. Yeah, Not I mean, a different variation. our first tie there. But, but I'll tell you one thing. the. Uh, the pheasant tail, I think, kind of holds the shape of the legs a little bit better when instead I was of becoming the body. When I it in the water, I think it's the contrast in color. Oh, really? Between the body. Yeah. And, so, uh, so I think if we try the mallard flank in a darker, darker, you I think? think it might work. Okay, so this one here, I put a, a dubbin wrap in there. Also worked good. And it worked really good yeah. too. And I mean, I've got a, I've got a few different variations, man. Mess around with your thread, mess around with your deer hair, try them in browns. And I mean, the biggest thing that I found is match it to your bottom, your weed color, because you'll find that the fish kind of blend, or not the fish, but your nymphs will typically blend with the bottom of your lake, whatever color it is. If you got a black lake, your nymphs will be black. If you got a green lake, your bugs will be green. Anyhow, we'll go back up top. We're up there. Anyhow. Hopefully this uh, pattern produces nothing but big fish for you too. I'm Brad Knowles, owner and operator of Permanent Fish Finder. You guys want to come out and put some of these flies to their test? The Stillwater fly fishing right now is superb. And uh, you got about a month or two of it prior to our, our big salmon fishing season. So once the lakes start to warm up, we're back. We're under the glacial fed rivers full of salmon. We get five Pacific salmon. We look forward to fly fishing with you. Check us out, permanentfishfinder.com. We've got a toll-free line if you want to book a fishing tour or even just hit us up with some fishing questions, 877-905-8121 or drop us an email at info at permanentfishfinder.com. Or, you know, another thing, if you're in the area, stop by our sports shop. This is where yeah. you get all of the material. Spud Valley Sporting Goods, LTD at 1380 Birch Street and beautiful permanent British Columbia. Once again, my name is Brad Knowles. Thank you for watching this great tie. You're going to enjoy it. It's going to put fish on wet nets, bent rods, and I'm out.